Well hello and welcome to this week's video blog titled The Journey to Homeless. This is being filmed on uh, Good Friday. So for those of us in the Christian tradition we're in the middle uh, of a big uh, three days in the church and it's a big week in the liturgical life of the church. Uh, over the last week as uh, I've journeyed into Holy Week I've had uh, com some companions. Uh, one is the writings of Monica Furlong who was an English writer. She wrote in the 60s and she wrote a well received uh, biography of Thomas Merton. I spoke of him uh, in a previous week. Um, Furlong uh, addresses the issue of vocation, vocare. What does it mean to live the vocation of being a Christian in whatever context you find yourself? I find myself. And um, until the end of this book, she quotes Merton, who is writing about the experience of being um, a monk and uh, what it's like to live out the life of being a monk, in particular being in the room, praying, uh, trying to pray, but being distracted and feeling uninterested uh, and sort of, you know, a malaise uh, called acedia. And, uh, and, and, and the person who uh, initially had the call to that particular vocation as their spiritual life, the wheels fall off the wagon and uh, it's distressing and they have thoughts and feelings which they don't like. Um, Furlong uh, uh, points out for us, as Merton has written, that um, the problem is not to give it up. For example, uh, the comment that Merton makes for us, which I think is helpful, is that to sit in the cell or to sit in your room or to sit in your church is the task and is to learn from it. And uh, in the, in the error, uh, Monica points out, is that uh, in any vocation, if you're called to be an engineer, a teacher, uh, uh, a producer of news, any vocation, we must distinguish between the grace of the call i.e. I feel called to teach with the actual doing of it uh, the carrying out of it because she says um, we must distinguish the grace of the call from the preliminary image of our souls which we spontaneously and almost unconsciously assume to represent the truth of our calling I've met many people who become engaged. They feel called to marry that person. They feel called to be married. This says they spontaneously invent an image of what it's like to be married five, ten, or twenty years of time in the moment of, I think I'm called to marry this person, the act of a wedding. But the living out, the marriage is not the same as a wedding. And we fail to recognize the difference between being called to do something and the actual doing of it, living it out. And uh, so the Holy Week, uh, I believe, is about that. That is the task. And uh, Merton says that we must destroy, a hard word, destroy this image and let it be replaced uh, by the actual living out of it. Don't live into the fantasy. Uh, let it be shattered. Uh, Merton was the director of uh, new uh, vacations at the Gethsemane and one uh, lent uh, one of the new uh, monks came and said he had written out of the things he was going to do during Lent and one of them was uh, give up food, you know, aesthetic. And Merton gave him the task of uh, yeah, drinking two or three thick shakes, melted milks with ice cream every day. And he said the d discipline of Lent for this, 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 for this person was to put on like 10 pounds as a Lenten discipline. Uh, because this person didn't have a real understanding of what Lent was about and it's not by getting, getting skinny in the name of Jesus. You know, get like that. So vacation is a dangerous and difficult thing, according to Martin Merton 
and Marika Fong. My other companion uh, for this week is the writings of Urban T. Holmes, who is, uh, was one time the dean of uh, the seminary at um, Swanee. And uh, he, he quotes in page 30 that a friend of his um, uh, gave an address at a prominent seminary on the spiritual journey. And he says, quote, Life is like walking at night barefoot through a barnyard of chicken shit. And um, he says, uh, it, apparently this is the most memorable part of that week. It goes, but this is what Jesus does. The gospel portrays and points us to the walk of Jesus and the walk to the passion and the walk to the incarnation. And that's what the cross is all about. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm and uh, um, we didn't wear shoes during the holidays. So we had cows, as you run around, you, you're stepping in, uh, you know, the business of the cows. And, and actually, when the, the, the cow patties dried out, we'd kick them, but we were like playing soccer. And um, last night I attended a foot washing service. And uh, part of that, Jesus says, I did this for you. Do you understand what I just did? You know? And uh, I'm mindful that um, when we uh, been to the holiday in last year and we were going to the farm, when people walked around, they didn't have enclosed shoes. They had sandals or nothing. They were barefoot most of the time. And so when someone came to your house, they walk in, they walked out the street, Camels walk up the street, donkeys walk up the street, goats walk up the street, and people walk up the street, and they've got a woman with a baby uh, that hold it out to do his business. There were no public toilets, and no flushing toilets. And so when you walked, <laughs> you know, uh, from town to town, you were walking uh, in all sorts of filth on the ground. Everyone did it. So when you came to the home, and you came in, they had uh, their sandals on. Jesus saw them. He takes off his robes, gets down, takes the sandals off them, and uh, washes uh, what I call politely toe jam out. Now that job, at that time, was reserved to the lowest person as a servant. It was the worst job. So therefore, uh, for him to do that is a remarkable reversal uh, of power and authority. It is a remarkable uh, assuming this servant uh, role, which they did not get. So he asks them, do you understand what I've just done for you? And uh, most people, including me, don't. We like to think of bread and wine, sitting at the table. Uh, whereas Jesus is saying, well, yeah, bread and wine is good. Sit on the table and share is good. But as you do this to the least of them, you do it for me. And as he says in the text, that we can read in the scriptures, uh, when you do this, you make me present. So it would seem, apparently, that every day in your walk, uh, sometimes being barefoot uh, is to be like Jesus. If you work barefoot, you can stand on thorns and uh, it can hurt your feet. And, uh, but uh, it provides us with a very powerful and, I would suggest, eloquent invitation to walk where Jesus walks and therefore like Jesus to bend down and do something which everyone else would just turn and run a mile uh, they don't want to do that um, for instance in India there's a caste system and some people in their caste clean toilets that is the only work they are allowed to do in India because of the caste. 
and they can never rise above it. And they want to rise above it. They want to do nicer things, cook food. Whereas uh, Jesus is inviting us to do the opposite, to actually go down. Uh, it was a downward journey in a class of society and where um, we find a new life. So that I think is the call, the call of Christ, uh, in particular from uh, today is Good Friday to join him. And, uh, and then if we accept the call to live into it. Thank you very much for your prayers and we uh, will say goodbye. Live well, live strong, and live long. <laughs>